If you love making your own gift card holders, treat boxes, and more, then this video is for you. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I am sharing the Stamp Market's Black Friday release, and these products are all focused on gift giving. Today, we're gonna dive right into the crafting, and I'll share the names of the products as we go along. We're gonna start off with the post box die. So you can see this die creates the entire box in one piece. So you only need a regular size die cut machine for this. You don't need an extra large platform. And I use some pixie tape just to hold it in place and cut it out. It's got all the score lines, everything you need on this one piece to create the main box shape. So as you can see, I am folding in all the score lines and I'm folding them all in towards the center, if that makes sense. I am not using a bone folder, but you could in this instance to get a nice crisp fold. But at, like I mentioned, everything is going in towards the center and that will make a lot more sense as we start to put it together. You can fold them either way, but I think this makes the most sense. And then the bottom simply folds up really, really easy. But I am going to put some hot glue on the side tab there. So I folded it into the center, put it on top of the tab, and then wrapped the box around and adhered it to the tab. Really easy, and then just fold it in the bottom. So easy, one bit of glue and then just fold up the bottom. For the top, I'm going to cut out this scallop piece and then I'm going to place this small rectangle in the middle. This is going to make the top of the box look like it has a slot, like a mailbox slot in it. So this piece, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna fold down or towards the center of the piece all of the score folds. There's a few tabs and then there's the scallop lengths on the sides and top and bottom. So everything is getting folded in. Then you can see that the tabs will attach to the back of that scallop piece. Really, really easy. It's very visually easy to figure out. So there, that little tab got some glue gun, hot glue, and then folded that scallop down on top of it. So you can see there's one scallop that has slots in it and the other scallop has a straight scallop line. That's the front and then the slots hook onto the back. This is the You've Got Mail two stamps and dies. Love that they have dies so you can die cut everything out, which means you can pop it up, you can make it in different colors. I decided to heat emboss mine with white embossing powder. And this die set has this little square that sits right on the front of the mailbox. It also has some holly and some pine boughs, and it's got little berries as well. So I am using the pink that I used before on the mailbox to cut out the berries, and I'm just gonna adhere them down, then use a little liquid glue to adhere down this whole greeting onto the front of the mailbox. Makes it a lot easier if you make a mistake or anything, you're not messing with the piece that you put together. In the die set, there's also this large envelope. You can see I cut that out. And then I used the Treat Yourself from the Stamps and Dies. I used the flowers from the die set, the mailbox die set, and the holly and the berries to decorate this. Now, if you flip this over, you can put a little adhesive on the back and a gift card will fit perfectly on the back of this envelope. So it will just peel right off of that adhesive. You don't have to worry about that kind of adhesive. And this is how you're going to give the gift card inside the mailbox. So you can see you can place it right inside, just kind of angle it so that it can sit perfectly inside. And I decided to close the top. Now you can adhere the back to the back of the mailbox and it will hinge up and down. I decided to completely close it so that it stayed sturdy and they'll be able to get the gift card out of the bottom. That's how I decided to do it this time. Either way is totally fine. I think the little hinge at the top would be super cute, but it was just easier for me to do it this way right now because I wanted to decorate the top. So there's also a small envelope. I cut a couple of different colors out of that. And then I have this sentiment that says mail for you. It's kind of in an arc, so it fits perfectly on the top of that mailbox. I glued the little envelopes together like a stack. And then I put some 
uh, glue right on the slot of the mailbox so I could adhere them on. So it looks like they're being dropped into the mailbox. I made some other fronts for the mailbox just so you could see all the different greetings and how you could do it in different colors, different combinations. They have delivery for you that could be on the envelope or letters to Santa. There's so many different options in the stamp and die set. And then those cute little envelopes that you can use to do uh, decorate the envelope and I did a different decoration on this other mailbox as well. So you can put two or three in the slot. Here is the Gable card box die. Now this is a larger size die so I'm having to use my original platinum, not the platinum six. So the original Spellbinders Platinum has that wider platform that will fit this die. The reason that they did a larger die was so that you only need to cut out two pieces and it will be able to create the entire box that will hold A2 cards. So again, for one of the pieces that you cut out, you cut that gable box whole die out twice. One of them you snip off the tabs like I'm doing here. The other one you keep complete like it is, just comes right out and that's why this was a larger die because it is basically two pieces so instead of having to put together three or four pieces to create the box you only need to cut two and put those together okay so we're going to use those score lines again and fold them into the inside of the box or fold them back or however makes the most sense to you. I don't know how to say it, but visually it makes sense to me to fold it into the inside of the box. And once you have all your score lines kind of folded, you can see how the box is going to come together. Now the top is going to be flat. It's going to have a handle and then be flat. So there are two score lines at the top and I just fold them both in one direction, then fold them in the other to see how I can make it lay flat. And that's how one half of the box top will be created there. It's really easy once you get going into it. This is not a difficult piece to put together and you do the same exact thing with the other side. Then I'm going to, on one side, I'm going to adhere the tabs Again, I'm using hot glue this time. I did not have any of that strong tape that you can use for these types of projects. And hot glue is the one that was going to dry the quickest for me. So that's why I'm using hot glue today. But whatever you have, a strong liquid or those strong tapes would be even better. And then you can see, you can just put the two pieces inside each other and then the tabs fold closed over the top and keep it closed. So this time I did use liquid glue because I was afraid that the hot glue was going to start drying by the time I got around to the side and I wanted to do all three sides at once so that I could just lay it right inside and then let it dry. So like I said, put the glue on one side and then lay the other side right on top. Those two pieces come together to create your box. The tops fold flat to create the top of the box and the tabs just wrap around those little bumps that poke out. The die set also comes with this large note die, large cards die and script. So I cut both of those out as well to decorate the front of this gable box. So this gable box can hold, like I mentioned, A2 cards in it and you can give it as a gift. There are also some flowers and leaves and stems that come in the gable box die set. So uh, you can use those to decorate the front of your box or the back of your box as well. And you can cut them out of just basic colors of cardstock and use some liquid glue to adhere them down. I did use liquid glue on the note and the cards as well. I'm going to, I did cut out centers for the large flowers and I'm gonna use some enamel dots from the stamp market for the smaller flowers. Just for something different. And again, I just love how easy it is to close the box. Those little tabs go right over and hook closed. This is the handmade note cards, stamps, and dies. So you can use this in a lot of different ways. You can use it to make note cards to put inside to give as a gift, and that's what I'm going to do. So I've stamped handmade with love, that's for the back of the box, and then I stamped for you three times. I'm gonna glue the handmade with love on the back of the box, and then I'm going to pop up the four U's on three A2 cards. So I'm working on A2 white cardstock, and I'm basically creating a set of note cards that say for you on them to give to somebody 
who can then give them to somebody else. So that's an easy way to give a little Christmas handmade Christmas gift or holiday gift. So the dies that I'm using are the dies that decorate the gable box. They have the flowers that you can either use individually or layer on top of each other like I did here. I kept it very simple, just a set of leaves and a sprig of vine, and then two different colors of flowers that all matched the for you color that I used. And then I just decided it would look really nice to round the corners. So I brought out my old corner rounder it's just been sitting around, but I really like the clean edge that it gives to these note cards that you can then add with some envelopes. So about three A2 cards and envelopes, three to four, will fit inside this gable box, and it makes a really sweet little gift to give to friends, family, teachers, whatever. And it's all handmade, so that's especially nice. And then it even says handmade with love on it, so they know that it is. If you're not into all of that folding and gluing, the really simple bag ties dies might be the answer for you. These are so cute. They cut out these little bag ties that are kind of like the bread ties, but you get all these extra little strips so that you can make them as small or as large as you need them. It also comes with a little heart to decorate the bag tie there. So I've cut them out. There's a medium, a large, and a small. I've cut all of them out so you can see the different sizes. And it's so cute how they interlock and close together so that you can keep your treat bag or whatever else you have giving as a gift or leaving on a neighbor's doorstep up, that kind of thing. It will look very custom and handmade and you can use any color combinations that you like, holiday colors, or even you can use these for Valentine's Day and beyond. So I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid glue to adhere one of the die cut hearts to the bag tag. Super simple and quick and easy. I love using clear bags for this, but you can use any type of treat bag. I have some candy canes in a bag. I just kind of twisted the top close with my hands and then I'm going to wrap the bag tie around. So the great thing about this, like I mentioned, is that it will allow you to use different size bags because of the extra nibs that you get on the end of the bag tie. You can cut that if you want or you can let it kind of stick out like that. I thought that was really cute. I have Hershey's Kisses. You can use, you can see on these smaller bags, you can even use one of the small bag ties. It's got plenty of room for a small bag like this. So depending on the size of your gift or the treats that you're giving will depend on which size you need, but it's handy to have all three in one set. So for this larger one, I'm going to use the extra little nibs at the end to create a little tag. So I grabbed the square from the mailbox die and some of the stamps from that stamp set and dies, and I'm just going to punch a hole at the top of it and then put some twine through. And then instead of tying the twine around the treat bag, which makes it really hard to open. I don't know if you've ever tried to get into something that is tied with twine, but oh my word, it, it can be a little challenging. So this is really nice because those bag ties will just undo, or if it's a little kid, they may just tear, which is nice too. So they'll just be able to open them. If they're careful and they just undo it, then they'll be able to reclose them as well. But with the, t the twine, sometimes it's really hard to get them open. Now it's got the twine, the tag, and the bag tie all on one. And it just looks so cute and festive. And these, again, would be able to be used for lots of different occasions and holidays. This is the floral rosette dies. Now there are three dies in this set. There's a small rosette die, and you can see that it cuts those nice scallops and also scores the lines for you, which I love. Yes, of course, you can score your own lines on a strip of paper. This makes it so much easier, and that beautiful scallop in the two different sizes is super cute once it's all cut out. So there's also a large rosette, and I'll show you both of them made at the end of this. And then there's this kind of uh, star that you can see I cut out of silver glitter cardstock. So all you have to do is go 
back and forth with your folds. So you do a valley, then a hill, a valley, then a hill, a valley, then a hill. Really, really easy. Just keep going back and forth until you complete that piece. I like to use a little bone folder at the end to get a nice crisp edge on all the folds. So I cut the rosette out six times and that's how you're going to put it together to complete your rosette. Now, I know I've seen long, long dies. Those can get a little more expensive. Here, you get two different sizes in one with that centerpiece, and it's a little bit more affordable because you cut it out several times. And then you just adhere them together. Again, if I had that really strong, sticky tape, I would use that since I didn't have any on hand. I have no idea what happened to mine. Uh, you can use some hot glue as well. And hopefully your hot glue looks better than mine. My poor glue gun looks like it's been through, I don't even know, a crafting disaster or something. So once they're all glued together and the glue is dry, you can finish the circle by gluing the two pieces together at the very end. Super, super simple to do and doesn't take long at all even to do all the folding. Once that is dry, you place it down and then just fold it out so the inside is the circle and the outside is the scallops. And then I use the hot glue to hold the center in place and to place that centerpiece of the rosette on top. I decided, and you could do this as well, that the back was going to start looking a little icky because of my glue and my glue gun. So I put a centerpiece on the back. So if you did this, you could actually use it as an ornament as well. Super, super cute. And I would love to have a bunch of these in different colors on the tree. I think they would look great. So once that was done, I wanted to share that I did them in a couple other colors. The red one is the large rosette, so you can see how much bigger that flower is. I thought it'd be really fun to decorate a package with these. So this is a gift that I've wrapped with butcher paper, and then I just hot glued the rosettes, a few of them, on top. It looks phenomenal, and I cannot wait to give this away. I don't know about you, but I love making my own gift card holders, treat boxes, and more. If you do the same, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. As always, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. That was really fast. I don't think I'm gonna have anything to add at the end. That's okay, we gotta get this done.